Coming up in this video, I'll show you how I paint Scaith's Wild Hunt for Beastgrave. Welcome back to Mini Junk, everyone. My name is Jarrett. So this is the second warband from the core set for Beastgrave. Previously, I painted Grishrax. That's his name, Despoilers, and uh, seemed pretty popular. Now, I did those in a Diablo style, which is a little bit more unique and interesting. And in this case, I'm painting them a lot closer to the standard Games Workshop paint job. No real preamble. This time, we're going to dive right in because there's a lot of steps, so it's a bit of a longer video. I am going to mention this is a bit of an update. Um, many of you know that I have not been working for the last long time, uh, several months. So uh, I'm actually going to be starting a new job in a couple days. So that means I'm probably gonna have to throw myself into that quite quite a bit and may end up slowing down on videos for a little while. We'll see how that goes. If it's not, you know, I can't say for sure. All I'm, th I'm thinking it may slow things down. So just be aware of that. And I hope to be making content uh, on a regular basis regardless, but we'll see. I'm not gonna say where the job is just yet, but it is local to Edmonton. So I won't have to tear down my video set and that will make it easier for me to continue making videos. All right, let's paint Skate's Wild Hunt. Starting out with an all over white primer applied with my airbrush and using Dela Rowney uh, Red Earth and I'm I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm spraying that on the top side of their legs. So anywhere that their, you know, deer legs are facing upwards, uh, I'm spraying that surface with this color. And the idea was going to be to spray a darker color on the bottom and you'll see how that's going to work out. So I applied this all over. You can see how I'm applying it to the tops of the, uh, the main scathe guy, uh, applying it just pretty liberally and making sure to cover up all the white uh, but leaving some of the underside uncovered because I'm just planning to do this sort of reverse zenithal idea. And so now taking the same brand of ink but this time it's burnt umber I started to spray it from underneath so that the, the other side would be darker but the thing is it's quite translucent and honestly not that dark not as dark as I expected so what's happening here is the <laughs> the underside is lighter than the upper side, which is totally not what we want. So at this point, it was looking really weird, and I was getting a little bit concerned, but just decided to plow forward and see what we could do to salvage it. However, that color was just right for the, you know, the fur color or the hide of this battle cat wannabe. I don't actually like this miniature out of the group. He's not my favorite, but it was a good color for him. And so I applied it a little thicker along the bottom so that that would be darker and in more shadow. But then what I decided to do is take sepia ink in my airbrush. Sepia is quite a dark brown uh, in terms of this Vallejo game ink and started to apply it on the underside where I had put the um, burnt umber and that was helping to darken things up properly so that the right areas were going to appear to be in shadow while, you know, still having that reddish, brighter colored hide or fur. I don't know what you, what you call that. Anyway, along the tops of each of these deer elves. And along the way, I was spraying this, um, not just sort of like on the underside of everything, but also when it came to the leader, I was applying it in any of the sort of nooks and crannies of the mus musculature. So anywhere there was a bit of a depression, although here you can see I'm making an awfully dark spot on the side of him that has to be fixed up later, I would say. Now then I just added a couple of drops of black ink from Vallejo Gaming directly to the sepia in my airbrush and mix that up in the airbrush and I'm applying it, you know, continuing to build the shadows, continuing to build the darkest, you know, recessed areas, certainly along the very bottom underside of the scathe leader, uh, his body, and then a little bit on the, on the smaller guys, but much less because they're smaller and I didn't want to turn their entire underside black. Thank you. 
I did something similar but just using straight brown ink and I applied that on the underside of the I actually should have looked this guy's name up but anyway the the attack tiger having gotten various browns all over the bases and lots of places it wasn't supposed to be I took um, Liquitex white ink and sprayed that to restore some of the white and now here you can see I'm taking sepia right out of the bottle and I'm applying that over the horns and antlers of these actually I think he's the only one that has antlers but anyway we did this with the Beastmen Warband it looks quite good I think so yeah so first just a straight coat of Vallejo uh, Game Ink sepia Now each of the guys has a bit of a patch of fur on his upper thighs that blends the torso into these uh, animal legs. So I used Gore Grunt of Fur to transition that. It actually ended up being a, just the right color, I think, to match with that red earth color I used from the ink. And uh, so it blended in pretty nicely. This is straight out of the bottle. Now I take Vallejo Game Ink Brown in my airbrush and just airbrush it onto the tips of these antlers, each of the sort of sections. Uh, at times you're going to hit maybe the, the wrong spot on, you know, as you're hitting one antler, you might hit another part in the wrong part. But I don't know, it worked out pretty well, so I'm not too worried about it. And if you don't have an airbrush, you can always just apply this in multiple potentially slightly diluted coats to build up. start out the hair and tails I use Vallejo Game Ink Skin Wash just out of the bottle brushed onto the hair textures it works out really nice I like it for ginger hair um, ultimately this is not going to be quite as orange as I want it to be so we'll take care of that in a bit but it's a good starting point it's definitely going to run down into their neck areas and, and just basically watch for pooling that you don't expect because at first it looks like it's not going to go anywhere but slowly it does seep into other areas easy to build models always have these fancy bases and this is no exception and this is basically going to be no pun intended the same way that I did the Ungor uh, Beastmen group because I want their bases to look the same because they're both playing in the beast grave so I start out by using Vallejo Gaming Green and I just apply that over all of the vegetation Then I take violet ink and I was kind of lazy. I only did one color on all the flowers. I did this violet color. I think it's a nice color for them, but you know, you could mix it up. You could add a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange or whatever to some of the flowers just to mix things up. But I did it the lazy way and just did one color. Then I come in with black and I'm using that as an airbrush, uh, kind of fading from the brown we did on the antlers up into black on the very, very tips doing this pretty carefully as you can see because I don't want to get black on the orange hair and some somehow I miraculously don't uh, it just comes down to practice with shooting the airbrush at an angle such that it's only hitting the surface you want it to any of the wood on the bases was done with contrast paint wildwood right out of the pot just painting it on carefully in between some of the, you know, vines and leaves and things like that. And it ends up looking pretty good. Take a 50-50 mix of snake bite leather and black Templar contrast paint. And it creates, well, on the, on the Beastman it was more olive toned. So I don't know if I made a mistake on... The ratio here i still like it as a bit of a darker leather color as opposed to just going straight snake bite leather and it does take on a little bit of an olive tone i found uh, from the black i guess i don't know i don't know what's going on with the chemical makeup of these but i thought it looked pretty good so i use this uh and it also i like the dark contrast against the fairly bright 
uh, colors of the hair. So that's why I went with this color here. Now I take my big bottle of Ethonian Camo Shade, put a few drops. This is really not going to be precise, but I put some in a palette well. I'm going to add some inks to this to increase the op opacity. Black, green, a couple drops, a few drops, well, more than that. Uh, a few drops of brown and mix that all up. And the idea here is to stain and shade the base, you know, these um, easy to build bases. I'm applying it all over the both the green sections that we did and the white groundwork. I'm not doing it obviously on any water. There's two spots of water as far as I could tell. And then I'm not doing it on the purple uh, flowers that we did. When that first coat dried, I did come back and do another coat of it over the majority of the groundwork because it was a little too light colored. Um, but once I did that second coat after the first one dried, I think it uh, ended up just right. Now I'm taking Moro White. You can take any white you want. I'm just cleaning up around any of the areas of flesh and other sections that were kind of getting the, the leaking ink on them. Now I'm taking Black, Green, and Sepia, and I mix those together 50-50. I'm literally just creating new colors. I didn't know what this was going to look like. I'm actually pretty okay with how it looks as well. Again, it's got a bit of an olive tone to it. I'm just using this on the like sort of leafy scale mail they're wearing. Then I just added a couple drops of black ink to that and started using it to color or <laughs> it feels like coloring to paint the um, like the little straps and ropes that they have that are holding on some of their armor. Usually it's across their chest and back. Uh, and this ended up, I think, being a good color for shading some of the um, like scale leafy things we've just finished painting as well. I also applied this onto all the bracers. Then I added quite a bit more black ink to that, probably three or four drops to create kind of a dark, a very dark brown color that I just sprayed into the areas underneath the shield and in that shield arm because you can't really see it and it was hard to reach to paint. So I just was going to throw that into shadow basically. Now I took Saigor Brown contrast paint and I used that to paint all of the like straps they're using. Uh, it's hard to describe, but anywhere they've got these like leather straps, especially Scathe where he's got it on the horse body and also across his chest on the torso. And their belts as well. On the official paint job, this is red, the thatched armor. I decided to do it green. I'm using orc flesh green, uh, applying it fairly liber liberally. It doesn't look like it here, but I ended up doing fairly thick amounts, uh, certainly to pull out the thatched uh, texture. And I thought green would look nice given that they're foresty dudes. And also, you know, it looks nice against the orange hair we're gonna have and that tawny um, colored fur and hide that they have. So anywhere that there was thatch work, I applied this green and I did not uh, thin it. Now all the flesh areas get gillum and flesh. I don't thin this and I don't, I don't blob it on too thick. I'm careful. I kind of do like a just beyond a glaze and just you know creating some shading but also soaking up any pooling that's happening with my brush if it starts to pool on the larger flat surfaces or anywhere it's not supposed to and that's to prevent uh, like the blotchy effect you sometimes see from contrast paints. I really really like how Gilliam and Flesh goes on over white. It's such a fast way to do uh, flesh for gaming models. Mm -hmm. 
Now I decided the hair and tails were not orange enough uh, from that first coat we did of the skin wash. So I gave it all just basically a relatively heavy glaze slash shade of Fugan Orange. And I think that did the trick really nicely. And just be sure to watch for any heavy pooling that might start and you don't want that to get on the flesh we just did or for example. Now on the green thatch I did a basically an all over coat of Vallejo Game Ink Green because I was fi finding it was a little washed out looking and you know that texture wasn't coming through quite enough and I found that this green enriched it and brought out that texture. Then I hit everything with matte varnish and now I'm coming back. I'm using Aethermatic Blue right out of the pot to do the two um, areas of water. Now this little smooth one, you know, it's not ideal for contrast paint. And realistically, I could have just painted it blue or used blue ink. But what I'm planning to do here is apply probably two or three coats of this, which is going to cause it to get darker and to build up and to create some interesting, you know, variation in the, in the um, blue. So that looks a little more watery, I guess. Uh, Peridot Alchemy from Scale 75 with a little bit of thinner medium to help it flow. That's going to be what I paint all the trim of the armor with. Because it's over white, needed to, I needed to do a couple of thin coats, I would say. I'm not usually a huge fan of the two or three thin coats type of process, but in this case, it was worth it to get a really nice smooth gold look. And this is an interesting gold because it does have greenish undertones to it. So I think that goes well with the green thatch and with the other reddish, uh, you know, contrast with the reds. But yeah, just go around, be very, very neat. And uh, I had a hard time with this. I kept going onto the green and having to like wick it up or soak it up or spit on it and wipe it up. Anyway, I had to keep cleaning it up. So take your time, try and be less messy than I was. Now I use Contrast Warp Lightning to shade that. It goes on really nice, actually. Um, it's a good way to shade the metal. And so I just painted it into any of the recessed areas. And I kind of knew I would go back with some of that Peridot Alchemy and kind of smooth things out a bit if any of these like corner shadings ended up looking a little too obvious or, or not quite blending in nicely. So, But I thought the green tone was nice and, and worked well with the Peridot Alchemy Metallic that we used. And for example, I did apply it around the edge of the mask or the, well, yeah, I guess it is a mask. It doesn't seem to be a helmet uh, to kind of just bring some definition to the face area. And of course, when that was dry, I then went back with the Peridot Alchemy just to restore some of that um, metallic area because really the green was supposed to be a fairly re recessed wash and not to come too far out onto the flat surface. I missed it the first time, but I did paint the like antler icon on his shield with the Peridot Alchemy as well. You can do shading by applying the same contrast paint you used twice because each time you put a layer it's going to have less opacity opacity and so it'll darken it and so i did uh, orc flesh ran it along sort of the underside or lower portions of each of the thatch areas to create some shading and depth And as you can see, I also used it as a liner to try and correct everywhere that I had gone on to the green with the gold, with the Peridot Alchemy. Here's a second coat of Aethermatic Blue on the water sections. You can see how I'm leaving a little bit of the outer edge as the original coat, and I'm trying to build towards a darker center so that it looks deeper in the middle. I didn't really do that on this larger piece. As you can see, I'm going right to the shoreline. But with the third coat that comes later, I think I did do that. Although it's arguable if that really shows up. Now I didn't capture it, but I added two drops of Scale 75 White Alchemy to the original Peridot Green Alchemy. 
And I think that, well, I think that works well. And so I'm using that to create a lighter version that I'm highlighting the trim of the armor with. I'm mostly doing that on corners, on the flared, you know, flared edges you see, a little bit of edge highlighting and a little bit on upper curved surfaces and, and a bit on the face as well. I think that really does a nice job of brightening it up and adding a highlight without um, completely washing out the green or using a, a different color. I decided to use wildwood in a couple more places. In particular, I'm using it on the, I guess, handle of the, I think it's a staff or a wand. I'm not actually sure what, what, what that's supposed to be, a totem. But I thought that should be wood because these are kind of like wood elves, right? And a little bit of wood as well on the horn. Like, for example, the central piece looks a little bit like carved bone, and I thought it'd be cool if that was just carved wood, because, again, these are very woodland creatures. So I think it worked out pretty well, and it looks nice against that green. Now, I also used wild wood on the handle of uh, Skate's spear. This is typically painted as a gold metal weapon and I think that's what it is in the official one and I thought again why not make this wood again these are very foresty dudes um, I think it looks good as wood actually and I'm not I don't have a problem with it um, so this is wooden handle it looks a little blotchy with one coat and I wasn't super loving it when I come back later and do a second one it darkens it up while leaving a little bit of imperfection which would you know makes it look suitably woody so I think that's fine Unlike the dark metal on the armor of the Beastmen, I'm using a fairly bright, bright metal on these guys wherever there is metal, which is, there's hardly any, frankly, uh, but certainly on the sword and on the spear, a uh, couple weapons, I'm using um, Vallejo Metal Color Silver, which is a really nice bright silver and goes on very smoothly. And this was also used on the tail blade of Scathe and of his battle cat. So I mentioned this before, but here's that second coat of Wildwood that I think helps the uh, weapon handle look a bit better on Scathe. The hooves or hoofs, hoofs are done the same way I did the Beastmen's. I do a coat of Dryad Bark, uh, you know, fairly thick I guess uh, making sure the coverage is good and then I'm going to come back with thinned bane blade brown and I'm going to draw little lines along just like the the front semicircular area of the hooves and not on the back and not on the thin crease that's in the front of each hoof and then I do that you can see how I kind of draw some lines and then go back and draw some more and that creates this interesting sense of multiple sort of ridges I guess and and gives them a lot of texture and I don't even enjoy painting those um null oil I use this to darken down those blades a little they're a little too flat and I often don't like to use like null oil the regular non-gloss kind on metals because it'll dull them down but I actually didn't mind in this case because I kind of wanted to and I wanted to pull out that little the little uh, sigil on the sword for example and just create some some dark areas and more working towards the hilt you can see and trying to maybe leave a little bit of silvery kind of bladed area on the ends of the weapons so little gem belly button rings they're wearing uh, i painted those white because i want them to be bright and look kind of mystical but i wasn't sure what color so i ended up using magenta ghost tint from badger it's their minotaur line very very carefully and lightly airbrushing that over the white gem uh, to give it some tint and to make it look a little bit like it's glowing in the area although arguably it looks like they just have really sore muscles around the gem i'm not sure the magenta i think is a nice color for any kind of mystical glow when you've already used green and you don't want to use blue because it doesn't go with the green i thought that was a good color for it now you can see i'm doing a little bit more Null oil just like I did before but building it up a little bit more towards the hilt again to create that shading and give it a little bit of depth and this is my finger blending method where I literally blend it by wiping my finger super lazy uh, aethermatic blue part three 
blobbing it into the middle of that and then again applying it here and leaving a little bit showing on the edge of by the shoreline to, to make it look more shallow there it super doesn't work because I don't know I didn't leave enough showing for it to actually be effective however I think the athermatic blue looks good on the water of these bases so let's paint these eyes. I use Menoth White Highlight from P3. It's a nice off-white. You don't want to use pure white most of the time. That's going to look too cartoony. Just hold my breath and very slowly and carefully, wearing my strongest drugstore magnifying glasses I have, I paint in the whites. And then you can see here I'm painting in black with a, round, a more rounded tip. And most of the time I kind of goof it up. I kind of groove up this eye here, and I have to try and fix it later with some of the flesh tone. I think I use Cadian Flesh or Kislev. Now I'm using uh, silver, the, the original silver, just to bring back some brightness to the weapons after doing that null oil. Doing a little bit of edge highlighting and doing a little bit of highlighting to sort of sharpen up the tip of that spear. Now I do a bit of dark lining to create some separation between some of the areas. For example, here you can see on the leg armor I'm using it. And I, this is a mix of 50-50 uh, Vallejo Gaming sepia and black. And I didn't show the mix for some reason, but that's what it is. It flows nicely. And when it dries, it's slightly translucent, so it doesn't look like a harsh black line like a paint would do. So I think it's really good for this, for this use. And I'll show you a couple of the spots where I end up using it. It also helps to create, bring up, bring in a bit more of that definition between the legs on scathe, which I think was necessary. Now I use Vallejo Still Water product, and I just grab an old brush and blob it onto the two spots of water that are on the bases of these guys. And you could use, like you could use a, a gloss varnish for this. You could use other, I think, secret weapon realistic water would work for this. Any water water product you're happy with. It's you want it to dry with a smooth, even surface as opposed to looking like waves. So I think some kind of a still water product works best. And here's the finished warband. Despite starting out with some seriously goofy airbrushed ink work, uh, I'm actually really happy with how these turned out. I think the like animal parts on them look pretty natural and organic and are a good color. I like that green armor that we, that we ended up using. I think the flesh looks great. I'm not using my turntable because the darn thing never keeps anyone in focus. So I'm just giving you some nice close up slow pans to check out what everyone looks like. Hopefully you're pleased with the final results. Here's a couple ways you can support the channel if you are so inclined, but consider subscribing for more videos. I'm sure there'll be more despite my newfound employment. <laughs> it's been fun making these for you and I intend to keep doing so. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.